Let's do a comparison video for the Namoki Alpine versus the Seiko Alpinus SPB121. And the reason why I wanna make this comparison video is because I was super excited when Namoki came out with their version or their homage, whatever you wanna call it. Maybe you call it a homage, maybe you don't. But I was super excited because it was, or at least it feels like a redemption model to the SRB017. And the reason why I'm comparing this SPB121 instead of the Sarb is because you can't purchase the Sarb 017 no longer brand new. It has to be pre-owned and you can still purchase the SPB 121. So I figured that that would be a lot better for comparison and a lot less stress for me handling a watch that doesn't belong to me. Which reminds me, big shout out to my man White Solomon over by Watch Crunch who lent me his watch in for me to do this comparison of his Seiko model. So thank you so much for being able to do that for me. And let's take a look at what we have here to compare. Now, I can't compare the finishing to the cases fairly as the SPB has been worn and loved, showcased throughout the watch. But I will note, from where I can see, the finishing on the Nomoki is amazingly good. And we would, at this point, expect the same from the brand new Seiko SPB if we were to have one in hand. I should also mention that because we, as the consumer, are hand assembling the Nomoki ourselves, that the user would be responsible for any dust smudges that are found on the dial or the interior of the watch. Now let's take a look at the specifications and with the dimensions we would expect to find very similar sizing to the case but in fact the diameter of the Nomoki is 39 millimeters and the Alpinist is 39.5 millimeters. The lug to lug is going to be roughly the same. The thickness is going to be thinner for the Nomoki. That mostly attributed to the case back and we'll get into that a little bit later. They're both stainless steel. They both have a sapphire crystal with AR coating but where we see a significant difference is in the water resistance. The Nomoki is claiming 100 meters of water resistance to where the Alpinist is showing 200 meters of water resistance. And I'll give you the reasons why a little bit later in this video, what I think is attributing to that. Another big significant difference is the fact that the Alpinist is going to have a magnified Cyclops. Now, you're not seeing that in this model because White Solomon actually chose to remove that Cyclops. But when you're getting it from Nomoki, the Alpine, it's not going to come with that Cyclops installed. Another big significant difference that we're gonna find here is on what's powering each watch. For the SPB, we're getting a Caliber 6R35, and for the Nomoki, we're getting a standard NH35. Now, both are beating at 21,600 BPMs and have 24 joules. But for the Caliber 6R35, we're getting minus 15 to plus 25 with a 70 hour power reserve and a magnet magnetic resistance of 60 gauss. For the NH35 Nomoki, we're getting plus or minus 20 seconds to 40 seconds a day with 41 hours of power reserve and we're not getting that magnetic resistance. The irony here is that Seiko is technically producing both movements so it is kind of funny that a company is doing a homage to another company but using their movement to power it. <laughs> Flipping them both over, the SPB121 offers a screw down see through case back that is heavily branded and engraved with text and numbers, which is probably where the watch is gaining most of its higher overall thickness when compared to the solid, brushed, and polished case back to the Nomoki. Now, if I were to install a see through case back on the Nomoki Alpine, then they would be much closer in thickness, but I'd rather not add to that and otherwise compromise an under decorated movement. I should also recognize from this view that we can see where where the screws were installed for the bezel attached to the case for the Nomoki, which we don't see on the Seiko SPB. So as an educated guess, I would imagine that the Seiko bezel might be pressed on or welded to the case effectively giving it more water resistance. For keyless work function, the crown on the Seiko has a more detailed finish between the knurling on the crown. Both are unsigned at the head of the crown and the Seiko chapter ring crown has an indent on the head of the crown where the Nomoki is a standard finish. For time reading, the hour and second hand tip shape appears to be wider on the Seiko and diamond shaped at the end of the second hand. The Nomoki being more of a standard bar shape at the end of its second hand. For internal design and function, the chapter ring for the Seiko isn't as deep of a black color as the Nomoki brand's chapter ring. And for the time reading plate, better known as a dial, we can see a different shade of green on the dial, more so a lime green on the Seiko and more of a forest green for the Nomoki. But both 
having a sunburst finish to them. The Seiko has three lines of text at the six o'clock if you include the X for prospects, while the Nomoki only having one line of text. At the three o'clock, we can notice the date wheel aperture on both watches, Seiko choosing the white date wheel color. And I particularly have chosen the black date wheel for the NH35, which is more of a nod towards the original Saab 017. But to the point, if you do choose and think that the white date wheel is a better look, you can get an NH35 with the white date wheel instead. So in my closing statement, I'll include a loom shot of both watches. But with the Seiko SPB, most of the differences in upgrade can be attributed to the movement itself, except for the higher water resistance, which I expect is coming from the bezel attachment and the fact that the proper installation for the gaskets and crown going into the Nomoki is dependent on the person putting it together. However, I can can say that overall the Nomoki Alpine delivers a quality finish and parts making for an exceptional redemption watch to the original Saab 017 if you did in fact miss out on getting a new production model. In addition to that, if you fancy yourself in adding a GMT complication to the build, they also offer a case, movement, and hands to the Alpine build being an NH34 collar GMT. The cost is also an attractive thing going towards the Nomoki Alpine because the Seiko SPB121 is effectively 725 of creating this video, and the Nomoki subtotal is only going to be $289 minus the bracelet. But even including the bracelet, like if you got the one that I purchased, the Jubilee style, which is very, very nice in quality and very, very nice in finishing. That's going to be an additional $74 USD, effectively bringing it up to $363. Still almost less than half the cost of the Seiko SPB 121. If you guys have a little bit more time, I actually did a video of me putting together the Nomoki Alpine step by step, giving you guys all the details on what to look for when assembling the watch. But if you don't, I appreciate you still for stopping in. And please don't forget that we all started with a watch. No matter where your watch collection journey takes you, no matter how you decide to collect, you guys are all welcome on this channel and in this community, as you should be. I appreciate you guys for stepping in, and I'll see you in the next one.